Hello and welcome to my talk, Inconsistency Tolerating Guidance for Software Engineering Processes. Software engineering processes, together with software quality assurance, focus on ensuring and testing that the engineering process results in the appropriate software quality. In safety critical systems, such as you can see here, which is a remote tower, uh, there are various regulation standards and guidelines that define traceability paths but don't necessarily prescribe the corresponding detail to solve the process. So you end up with the following situation where you have a traceability information uh, model here depicted on the left hand side, uh, which consists of various artifacts such as high level requirements that trace to subsystems, high level design specifications, down to low level requirements, which again then trace to functional units, low level specifications, and in test cases. And then on the right hand side, you have the actual process steps that uh, developers go through, such as re reviewing requirement specifications to encourage reviews, uh, refining high level requirements to low level requirements, updating the specifications, and on and on. And you see that these kind of, there are a lot of relations between artifacts where they are produced, read, updated. And the question is always then, um, how much uh, ability does a developer have to uh, deviate from this process and how can we support that? For example, updating the specification, is the ref uh, refinement already done? And so on, and with, when something changes, perhaps unexpectedly upstream, what is the effect on the downstream element? So the general aspect here is that you typically have a trade-off between following the quality and process constraints and the ability to deviate. Typically, that's, uh, you have complex situations where you have multiple projects working on at the same time, different standards, constraints, processes in each project. They're typically informally defined only. And so the engineers have the need to deviate temporarily uh, from the process. And then in order to fulfill these constraints again, this resolution often requires the consensual agreement among multiple engineers, so they have to coordinate, and this resolution is not often available and possible as soon as it, it's detected. So in our previous work that I uh, presented us another talk, it, we addressed the problem of unclear which checks are to, done best when. This is uh, presented in our ICSI paper, supporting quality assurance with automated process center quality constraint checking. And here, this paper and this talk, I'll focus a little bit more on the follow-up problems here. And still, the challenge is directly there that it is very hard to understand what are the implications of postponing inconsistency resolutions. And we, we suggest to address this the following way. So we have a passive process engine that also is the focus of the other talk, where we observe from developers their activities in uh, these tools, such as Jam or Jira, and then map these to individual process steps. Now, the more interesting and novel part here now is we do incremental deviation checking. So instead of checking perhaps all steps, uh, all constraints at the same time, we focus on exactly which artifacts, which parts, which properties, which relations have changed so that they can be then incrementally checked. So we only need to check those constraints, those process evaluations aspects for those changes, for those properties that have actually been updated. What we do then is we identify the impact scope. That means we are not just, uh, we are busy interested in what are the effects of, uh, what are the effects of this inconsistency of this constraint violation. And for this purpose, we plan using a Boolean logic engine by encoding everything in Boolean logic and then defining the minimal unsatisfiable sets. And these unsatisfiable, unsatisfiable sets describe all the elements that are affected by uh, inconsistency. And once we know what is the impact scope, we can then start producing repair uh, and recommending those, such as stopping a step, uh, redoing a step, starting a step, or uh, perhaps undoing or stopping a previous step. And from this kind of uh, templates, uh, build trees that say, okay, step, stop step three and uh, reevaluate artifact two. And all this is then presented to a dashboard where you can see what are the violent constraints, what is the affected impact, so what are the artifacts, and, and the engineers working on these artifacts, and what might be possible repairs here. Let's look at an 
at an example here. So going back to the initial workflow and the uh, uh, traceability information model, assume we have a status change of the high-level requirement, for example, from release to in progress or in, re in editing. Then with incremental uh, constraint checking, we immediately know, okay, only these, perhaps in these three steps where this might, use, might be where uh, uh, this property is used in a constraint. It might even be that the high-level requirement or lower requirement doesn't, this, there are no constraints here that would check uh, the status of that high-level requirement. So therefore, we wouldn't even be necessary and would not have to reevaluate any steps here. Perhaps only the other three uh, steps contains constraints and only those constraints are then re-evaluated. Also, what we can do is then, what is the impact assessment? We could say, oh, okay, now by looking at this, we know that updating the low-level specification might be impacted because the high-level the low level requirement might have to be re-evaluated. So we can say, okay, what is the impact of that change up there? And uh, then notify the engineer, wait, you are updating this based only on the low-level specs, but because these are dependent from a previous step on a change in the high-level requirement, you might want to wait here. You might have a potential impact here for your work. And repair would then go ahead and, for example, suggest that setting back this, uh, finishing up this, waiting until this is done, and, def and postpone execution, for example, of this review until the high-level requirement is fine again, the updating specification has been completed. So how did we start evaluating this preliminarily? So we have as a, a use case an air traffic control system, a re real one, uh, where the, the developers use a Jira for work packages and sub-work packages uh, and Java for high-level no-level requirements, design definition, test case, and so on. And then we took this process that I showed before, uh, took four steps out of these with uh, eight constraints and extracted the data for 109 process instances. So some of the constraint examples were all traced low-level requirements have, st have to have status released. We then, uh, what we then did was we replayed all these artifacts from the beginning, uh, each change, and then evaluated each step what, whether there was a violation in quality constraint uh, constraints, but also what, to what uh, extent the pro uh, process has progressed. So you see here the, uh, that the process here, these six steps from the low level, uh, the refinement aspect, um, S5 and S6, were not investigated because there were no constraints defined for these. So we looked only at S3, 4, 7, and 8. And here we had to look, okay, from these one or nine instances, how many had, in, uh, had the step S3 as marked incomplete? And how many uh, had uh, the quality as um, assurance constraints in that step uh, unfulfilled, which one were fixed and which were at the end still open. And also we had looked at the time for these that were fixed, how long these uh, constraints stayed in the state of, uh, in an inconsistent state. So we did it for all these other steps. And what we found was, as you can see here, the average fixing time is very, very long because at the moment they can't be done, they need to be done manually, so they're done typically at the end. So, uh, um, Violation occurs early and fixing uh, takes time. Or uh, that there were still some not fixed ones at the end that is part of a different paper. But what we can also see is that all the incompleted steps indicators were never fixed. So we don't have any average fixing time here. That was because we looked at that into the processes. These, these indicators, whether it's were complete, are duplicate checkboxes in Jira. And these were forgotten to be checked. So actually the process was done, but people forgot to check them. And this is one example where this uh, can help a lot by, for example, a repair would just be, okay, just click on that one and it, the process reflects what was really going on. So then at the current work and next steps consist of translating the process model into Boolean logic and the MUS back. And then there were a really interesting evaluation questions are, how useful are really the provided impact scopes to developers? How useful are the recommended repair trees? And then from this also follows, how detailed do we have to have the process and quality constraints actually modeled? And what is the impact if we have modeling gaps there? And with that, I uh, thank you for your attention and happy to take any questions online. Thank you. 
Hello, welcome back. Uh, welcome back. This is the Q&A session for a near talk, which is a follow-up study related to the previous presentation. And Christoph is here uh, to answer our questions. Uh, as we don't have any question yet, so I'm going to ask one. Uh, the approach and the prototype seem quite useful, uh, I think, in the sense that it informs the QA engineer about the reasons that a process step is in an inconsistent state and provide uh, automated repairs also. Uh, however, does your approach only generate a single repair to solve an inconsistency or more than one repair can be specified? Because I think that one one repair may maybe not uh, enough no for mm -hmm. the quality assurance uh, constraints violations yeah right uh, so good question uh, so the idea is not just to provide one recommendation i mean it's only about providing recommendations so we the idea is not to enforce the developer in having to follow one but really giving perhaps several options but then typical trade off between getting exactly the right recommendation versus uh, giving perhaps too many recommendations. Uh, so the idea is uh, not to give perhaps more than three recommendations also because the context might change, the recommender might not have the complete context available uh, and therefore also might just be provide uh, non-sensible uh, recommendations. I mean, there uh, the uh, feedback from actual user study will be the ultimate answer to that how much, uh, how good is this really? And, or perhaps uh, a recommendation is not needed. The developers know, know best, but by having the knowledge who to interact with and what is inconsistent might be sufficient for them. Uh, mm -hmm. But I mean, we want to be more, uh, let's say a more sophisticated approach, a little bit more on the scientific side. Uh, so this is why we kind of uh, want to go all the way to repairs. Okay, thank you. We got a question uh, from Henry. Uh, can, um, the question is, how the different levels of specifications that check it against constraints are extracted? Um, I hope I understand the question correctly. So how do we get the constraints uh, at the process level, at the, the quality level? How, where do we get them from? If this, yes. is, the, if this is the question, then Typically, companies have some kind of informal documentation. There, uh, there's a reference also in the paper that kind of uh, they have uh, investigated to what extent do these companies use formal processes to define the engineering processes. And most uh, of uh, companies invest uh, also studied there. Uh, this is a, so basically I'm referring to a external work. They're, they are show okay, it's informally described or the same informally described, and this is the same case with our evaluation partner that they had PDFs nicely documented what should be done, but they were not operational. And so um, here you typically have some checks how the process looks like or what should be done. And then a lot is also in the, just in the head of the QA engineer that then has to communicate. Uh, and I mean, uh, informally he told me, okay, he has some, uh, some text uh, prepared that he just copy pastes into Jira comments so they can interact and show what is not correct yet. So it's about having to formalize this constraint, but this also kind of requires to think about how can I really check those? But most of them are informally already given, they just have to be really put into that language or into Java code at the moment. Mm. Okay, thank you. We are getting out of time for questions. If you have other questions for Christoph, please uh, go to the discussion room so then you, you can discuss there. Yes, questions. Thank you. Uh, Thank you for attending the, the session. And I will join the discussion room in 30 seconds. Uh, and so, so Heng Lee, I will answer your question there if, if this is fine with you. But I'm not sure whether the discussion room is already available. But I will definitely go to this two uh, questions uh, in the discussion room that's going to be there. Mm -hmm. Yes, you got another one. There is another question there.